Hey everyone, Dr. Nick Delgado here. I want to share with you a dramatic breakthrough, a discovery that has been known for nearly 40 years, and yet we now have the simple steps to help you to stop and reverse the number one killer we call heart disease naturally. How do you know whether you have heart disease. We're gonna cover that in this live webinar podcast, and we're also gonna give you the actual, very specific steps of what to do to reverse cardiovascular disease. And keep in mind that cardiovascular disease affects your circulation, the feeding of blood to all the cells of your body, to the organs, so not just the heart that's at risk, yet the organs the ability to hear, the number one cause of hearing loss, I'll purport, is related to atherosclerosis and the blood vessels leading to the small hearing blood vessel capillaries to the ear. The leading cause of blindness is right up there with clogging of the arteries to the eyes. Uh, the problem with peripheral neuropathy, where your feet feel like there's pins in the, in the feet, that is another problem related to cardiovascular disease. So what are you doing to detect this condition? And more importantly, what are you doing to reverse this leading killer? As a family, you might have a history. I know my father had cardiovascular disease. Uh, he had had a stroke and he's pictured there with uh, my small youngest son on his lap there, little Roman, and he, was suffering from this problem, was on cardiovascular drugs, he was on prostate drugs, he was on hypertensive medications. And it's interesting that myself, uh, in this picture in the blue shirt to the, to the next to the picture of my father and my brother Brandon and my son Nicholas, was I had high blood pressure when I was a teenager. That's right, I was only about 16, 17 years old, I was put on blood pressure medications. I was on medications off and on throughout high school until by the age of 21, I had a transient ischemic attack, which is a stroke. And I fell to the ground, it was Thanksgiving morning, and I was terrified. I didn't know what I could do about this problem of high blood pressure. I had cut out salt out, out of my diet, I was not stressed. I, I did everything possible. And Danny, are all three cameras running? Okay, good. Within only six months of learning about this amazing discovery of how we can reverse cardiovascular disease, I was able to not only lose 50 pounds, my blood pressure came down to normal. I've kept my blood pressure down to normal and my blood lipids ideal for nearly 40 years. Here's an after picture while I was even able to add muscle to my body by cutting out all the animal products out of my diet. I followed four simple steps that I'm going to teach you along with Dr. Kathleen Geringer who will join us a little bit later. And we these steps are so simple that every one of you can follow this approach. I assure you, this can save your life. I want you to share this video and this podcast uh, when it becomes an online course as well. Tragically, the mother of my son, Nicholas Shelley, when Nicholas was born, she had developed congestive heart failure related to hyperthyroidism. So we know that hormones affect the health of the heart as well. And she died also on Thanksgiving morning, uh, a tragedy obviously 27 years ago. And it affected me to this day because I've searched for ways to educate and motivate and guide people like yourself that there is a better way that we can truly balance the hormones. We can bring the blood pressure down. We can reduce all the risk factors. Will we prevent heart disease completely? Probably not. But in those of you who I believe there's an 80% chance you'll comply with the rules that I'm about to give you, you can see the results in your own lifetime in your family's lifetime and those who are affected near in this relationship to the number one killer. I can tell you that when Dr. Barnes did the study in February of 1960, it was published in the medical literature on 10,000 autopsy reports. Dr. Barnes reviewed people throughout the world looking for atherosclerosis. And he found without exception, every culture that 
subsisted on an animal-based diet centered around meat, cheese, eggs, dairy product, uh, chicken or fish. In those individuals, he found the highest cholesterol levels, but also he found the highest death rate from cardiovascular disease based on autopsy. After they died, they cut open their chest, they looked at the arteries, and they found severe atherosclerotic plaques. Those individuals who were on a plant-based diet their whole life Typically, they live longer than those on animal-based diet. When they examined their arteries, they were completely crystal clear, no plaques whatsoever. Now, this is in stark contrast to our culture where individuals by the age of 20, during the Korean War, they found the average young man who died in, in action, when they autopsied their arteries, they found atherosclerotic plaques in their arteries by the age of 20. But worse, by the Vietnam War, years after the Korean War, the average 20-year-old had even more severe atherosclerosis. To this day, teenagers and young adults have developed this disease even from the onset of a young youngster because why? We have learned to eat the same foods. Is it genetic? It can't be. There are cultures around the world, like in Japan, where they follow a diet that's largely centered around rice or in Okinawa around sweet potatoes. They eat a lot of vegetables. They eat some fish and so forth. Uh, but overall, their diet is much less fatty than ours. And in those individuals, they have a much lower incidence of cardiovascular disease. They're rarely overweight. Uh, they rarely develop Alzheimer's, which is clogged arteries to the brain. They uh, have a lower incidence of high blood pressure and stroke. And yet, the northern Japanese who eat an excessive amount of salt do have a higher rate of hypertension. We're going to look at that in a little bit, but in most cases, reasonable amounts of salt are relatively safe. But here's the signs. It's called xanthelasmus. If you have these little pimples around the eyes, if you can take a look here, uh, let me just bring that up on the cursor. Let's see if we can see that right at the crease where the nose and the eye and the eyelids those bumps, those are atherosclerotic plaques. Those are cholesterol plaques that are forming in the skin. And there's so much cholesterol in the average person with a cholesterol level of over 200, they start to form these plaques. The higher the cholesterol level, the more likely it starts oozing right through the skin. Guess what? Cholesterol even gets into the lens of the eye. I want you to take a look at uh, this ring, this white ring in this person's eye. See right where the white part meets the color part of the eye. That's atherosclerotic plaque. It's called Arcus senilis. It, uh, it used to be called Arcus cornelius because it, it, the senilis, it used to develop in older people, but now we know it develops even in younger people. So we now call it Arcus cornelius because it forms an arc of cholesterol around the uh, cornea of the eye. Now, you won't be able to see it in your own eye. You're going to have to take a mirror and you just simply take that mirror and you reflect it into another mirror that you're looking in and you'll be able to see the top ridge of your eye. So by doing so, you, you got to hold your eyelid, look down, and then when you look into the mirror of, of, of the mirror that is, you'll see if the arc is in your eye. Otherwise, have someone else do this by holding your eyelid, look down, you know, kind of point your finger and look down and see the ring of the eye. That is a sign that you have a significant amount of atherosclerotic plaques in your arteries. It's really tragic that people around the world are essentially dying prematurely from cardiovascular disease. I have a carotid artery scanner here in my office, and I'll demonstrate it at one of the future events uh, that we have. But you can see on the picture uh, with the red uh, highlighting the blood flow through the artery that there are potential to find plaques in the arteries. A carotid artery scan is the safest, easiest. Ultrasound is very sensitive and it won't harm you. It doesn't exert any kind of radiation or anything, but it will detect how much plaques in your arteries. I'll never forget, I had a gentleman come in who lived in Missouri area, and he showed, when I looked at his arteries, his carotid arteries, he had the biggest plaques I'd ever seen in a person's carotid arteries. And I asked him, I said, what do you eat? 
And he said, well, you know, we eat a diet uh, in, in Missouri uh, that is centered around steak and meat. And we even take the fat and we, we fry the fat. Uh, what do they call it? Uh, chiblets? Does anyone know what they're called? <laughs> but they're ch chunks of fat and they eat chunks of fat from steak. I remember when I was a kid, there were times that I was fed uh, th those uh, foods. And it, 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 it's just shocking to me that he ate so much cheese, so much meat and eggs that it clogged up his arteries. And there wasn't a doctor who even warned him. They just said, well, we're just going to have to do bypass surgery. Well, of course, the surgeon is going to earn a lot of money to do that. The hospital is going to make a lot of money. And so there's a lot of vested interest to go about uh, intervention of heart disease in the traditional way of cardiovascular intervention. It turns out that carotid artery scans are so sensitive that you don't have to wait till you even have chest pain because chest pain means you already have 90% blockage of a coronary artery. That's how severe it's got to be before you even feel chest pain. I never told many people this, but when I was uh, about uh, 18 or so years old, I had been eating about 12 eggs a day and steak and meat to play football. Uh, I had a chance to play college football. I had two scholarships uh, awaiting me in football. And it turns out that I had chest pain for an entire year. And I didn't know what to do. I, I would go to sleep at night. I would have chest pain. I'd wake up with chest pain. And little did I know... It was because I had clogged arteries leading to my heart. It wasn't until uh, I was 22 years old that I finally had a, a TIA, a stroke, that I realized that I, my life would not last very long. It, it, it was with great excitement that I learned about uh, the idea that we could reverse heart disease. This book wit written by Julian Whitaker, MD, he wrote this book based on the transcripts that Nathan Pritikin had at the Pritikin Longevity Center. And I got invited to work at the Pritikin Longevity Center. And it was there that uh, I showed Nathan Pritikin about six months before at a Pasadena lecture that he attended and presented at that I had followed his program and lost weight and kept it off. And he invited me to come work at the Pritikin Longevity Center. It was quite exciting. So we routinely do this cholestec. It's a cholesterol uh, test. It's called CLIA waved. So when we do the microscope test, we show people their blood under a microscope like I did for a Tony Robbins event, but we also measure their blood cholesterol, the good cholesterol, HDL, the LDL, the bad cholesterol, the VLDL, uh, which is called very low density lipoprotein. We measure uh, triglycerides, which is fat circulating in the blood and the glucose levels. The image there is of a thermography of showing circulation to the brain and the neck and the head. But I think there's a lot of misinformation out there. Individuals are often told that if they were to uh, say, for example, the Eskimos, the Eskimos um, eat a very high protein diet and it's certainly high in fat and blubber. And the Eskimos, it's a, it's a myth that they're healthy. In fact, uh, Dr. Uh, Davis, Garth Davis, in his book, Proteinaholics, he explained, uh, according to the medical journal of Maize, uh, which is bone mineral content of northern Alaska and Eskimos, that these individuals have weakened bones. They've lost their bone density. They're also at great risk for interdermal bleeding, which is stroke from all the excess omegas they consume from all the fish they eat. And it's interesting that they have really horrific health. They're not very healthy people. Don't, they do not live very long. And it's really important to understand that when these groups of keto promoters uh, point to healthy cultures and they uh, claim that Eskimos or Inuit tribes are healthy, that's far from the truth. What they've done is, in the book Live Longer Now, they've mixed groups like in the Canadian region, there's a group of Eskimos that eat less than 23% of their calories from fat. They eat a lot of uh, tundra and vegetables in that region. And so they don't have a very high fatty diet. They're not Eskimos living on the coastal region. So because they eat so much plant-based foods and get a lot of plant-based proteins, their arteries are clean. But some people will point to that group, according to Scientific American in 1971, and say that the Eskimos are healthy, even though they eat a lot of blubber and fat. That's not true. They've simply mixed the groups 
and showed the one group that has healthy arteries compared to the group in the coastal region that eats a lot of blubber and fat, and those, peop those Eskimos have uh, poor health. Another group that the groups will point to uh, in the review of the literature is called the Maasai tribe of Kenya, Africa. These individuals herd cattle almost 30 miles a day. And Dr. Mann went out to check and examine these individuals on treadmill tests. And he said, wow, they passed their treadmill test. These people are healthy. Even though they eat the blood of the, the cattle that they uh, tend to, uh, they eat their sour milk. It's kind of like a yogurt or a buttermilk, I guess it would be called. And they have relatively low cholesterol levels, even though they eat over 200 milligrams of cholesterol a day, which is not a lot. The average American eats far more than 200 milligrams of cholesterol a day. In fact, one egg and maybe a piece of cheese would exceed 300 milligrams milligrams of cholesterol in the body can only get rid of 100 milligrams of cholesterol a day. But Dr. Mann said, before you can go and say that these people are healthy, I need to go back and the meat and dairy industry commissioned another study to examine these people upon autopsy. And here was the shock. These individual Maasai tribe had massive plaques by the time they were aged 30 or 40 in their arteries that could break off and cause a stroke and kill you or them just as quick as it would you or I. But because they ran their cattle 30 miles a day, they had enlarged coronary arteries, and that's why they could pass the treadmill test. But the autopsy, they could not pass. Just like Dr. Barnes, when he examined 10,000 people on autopsy reports, Dr. Mann was then uh, put in the medical literature that something about, in post-studies, they said sour milk and the fact that these people have uh, some kind of an enzyme uh, alteration by this type of milk that has certain uh, action on the cholesterol, they had a lower uh, blood cholesterol even though they were consuming enough cholesterol to clog their arteries. So it's important to know that these people, the Maasai tribe, are not healthy contrary to the keto people and popular belief. The most important study ever released uh, came about, and Danny, do we have any Facebook notes coming up or uh, YouTube as well? Because I think most of the chat should be at nickdelgado.com. Can you pull it up on, on, the, on the laptop here? Okay, good. Uh, and people have logged in, right? Okay, good. So one of the comments here I'm seeing, where is it? You said there's a comment on Facebook. Yeah, I see Sage A. Halleck. Hey, thanks for noticing that uh, mandatory listening to this show. But uh, according to uh, Dr. Brown and Goldstein, who received the Nobel Prize for their work on LDL cholesterol, which is commonly known as the bad cholesterol, these individuals has, have physiologic low LDL cholesterol levels and there's people around the world who have low LDL cholesterol levels genetically and they rarely ever have a heart attack. However, mammals in general have a cholesterol level of about 80 if they don't consume any animal products whatsoever. Uh, it's interesting that human babies tend to have an LDL cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol, of around 30. But it's been proven that humans on a low-fat diet are healthy at a range of an LDL cholesterol of 50 to 80. In other words, the body produces all the cholesterol it needs and meets the basic needs without having to take in more cholesterol from the diet. Other scientists and researchers have confirmed this, that it's adequate because the cells of the body, which cholesterol is like a hormone and it helps produce all the other hormones, but essentially, the cells of the body produce all the cholesterol that is needed to remain perfectly healthy. Uh, you can reference that at plantpositive.com in their blog. So keep in mind then, dietary cholesterol is the number one cause of heart disease. 1972, Connor and Connor used the data from 29 countries and they showed that those on a plant-based diet had clean arteries. They also showed those on an animal-based diet with eggs, cheese, meat, and dairy product had the most severe atherosclerotic plaques they could ever find. Now, some of the keto people will discount this and say, wait a minute, Dr. Anacel Keys only studied six countries. Later, he did seven countries. Why did he leave out some of the countries? Well, it turns out Dr. Keys left out Mexico and France because they didn't have very good public reporting and they weren't keeping track of um, the confirmation of death certificates. So in all fairness, he did include the proper studies. Even if he included Mexico and Japan, you can see what they call the 
uh, French paradox that those people too, even eating their rich creams and fatty foods, they eat smaller portions. They do walk to the corner stands and get fruits and vegetables each day. Overall, their diet isn't as bad as the average American diet, but they do have atherosclerotic plaques, worse than countries that are on complete plant-based whole foods diet. The most exciting example is the Tarmar Indians who play uh, a game of kickball. And the object is to sit the, set the goalposts 180 miles away and kick the ball through the goalposts. They run nonstop, lighting the ways with torches, uh, over uh, running for 180 miles uh, for 36 hours all night. And it's interesting that these people eat a diet of beans and peas, panola nuts, uh, tortillas and fresh uh, fruits and vegetables, and they eat animal product infrequently, almost never. So it's interesting that uh, when the Tarmar Indians are given cholesterol foods like eggs, cheese, or meat, particularly eggs, uh, their cholesterol, which is normally about 125 to 130 with a low LDL cholesterol of, say, mm, about 60, their HDL is about 30, their cholesterol level goes up within 30 days of using eggs every day. When you take them off the eggs, their cholesterol comes back down. When you put them back on the eggs, their cholesterol comes back up. So there's human proof that if you take plant-based foods, who, uh, individuals who have followed a plant-based diet their whole life, and then you add cholesterol to their diet from any source of animal product, their blood cholesterol will go up. But you see current studies in the last 15 years sponsored by the meat and dairy industry, they wanted to focus on cultures that are already on a high meat, cheese, egg diet because they already had high saturation levels of cholesterol. When you give them an egg or two, their cholesterol doesn't go up that much. So it was because of that, current recommendations by some groups are implying that it's not important to, uh, to be uh, uh, following uh, a low cholesterol diet is what they're purporting. And yet the, the reality is, I'm on this approach to teach you that without exception, there are genetic exceptions. And I want to say that some people genetically, like when they uh, are monitored, uh, tend to have higher cholesterol. And those people have to be even more careful, particularly if they, their liver is faulty and they're having cholesterol levels of 500 to 800. I've seen this in the medical literature. It's really important to know that that individual has to be even more strict than most people ever have to. This was proven in monkeys that there's, they're called the Hansen uh, study in 1973 NIH, and they took a group of monkeys and they gave them as much food as they wanted. Well, some of the monkeys t tended to overeat and get quite obese and overweight and develop diabetes. Other monkeys exposed to the food did not overeat. They ate up to a certain point, they stopped eating, and they were satisfied and they never became overweight. So there is a genetic tendency for people, and especially with some people who have a high number of fat cells, they're gonna be at greater risk to develop obesity, heart disease, hypertension, high blood pressure and so forth, or even um, various cancers. It's interesting that at the zoos, when the visitors would feed the macaw monkey snacks of leftovers, candy and meals and peanut shells and uh, various uh, types of, of sugary breads, these monkeys uh, would become overweight and develop human uh, disorders, human diseases. Uh, probably the most important study that I can share with you is a study that I, I published and uh, did this for getting my PhD thesis. And it's interesting that I had an opportunity to work with Tony Robbins at Lifestyle um, medicine that is at, uh, at Master University. And it was a nine-day study that I published uh, from March to August of 1992 to 93. And we were monitoring 643 people where we did their baseline cholesterol test and we measured each person within nine days after they were put on a diet based on this cookbook, How to Look Great and Feel Sexy. Uh, Tony Robbins at the time had this cookbook in his kitchen at his home. We used it to pull many of the recipes that were created for the event at uh, Master University in 1993-94. And uh, I'm excited to share with you that we also offered a book, uh, Weight Loss and Energy Now. And all the participants got to eat the foods. They got to follow an oil-free, plant-based, whole food nutrition diet. 
And we followed up with these people with one year to retest them because they came back to a future event. And we were able to uh, collect the people that actually had repeat uh, attendance. It's interesting, but we had dramatic reduction in their lipids better than even statin drugs or as good. Uh, the triglycerides, the higher they were, the better they reduced. The average reduction was 42% reduction in blood fats, known as triglycerides. The average reduction in cholesterol was at least 30%. The higher the cholesterol, the greater the reduction. The average weight loss per week was six pounds in a week. And we noticed reductions in blood pressure, improvements in uric acid over a three month period. Uh, kidney and liver enzymes improved to normalcy. All of this using How to Look Great and Feel Sexy Cookbook. We have uh, a newer cookbook called Simply Healthy Cookbook, and it's on ebook or in print on Amazon. And you can get this uh, link to the book, and I'm gonna give you a special offer at the end of this event, and I want you to pay attention because the reality is we now have conclusive proof we can reverse cardiovascular disease, not just improve the blood lipids and cholesterol and whether you believe in that or not. We have conclusive proof. And if you look at what does it take to reverse coronary artery disease, this is um, a study before and after. It was two and a half years. Caldwell Esselstein, Dr. Es Esselstein, who wrote the book Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, he came out and showed in section A, a, a coronary angiogram with the narrowed blood vessel. You can see the restricted blood flow going through, uh, let's see, through this blood vessel here. Let me just see if I can show you with the cursor. Well, it's right along here. You see uh, the arc here. The blood vessel barely is getting blood flow to the artery leading to the heart. There's the left main and known as the widow maker and the various arteries, the main three arteries leading to the coronary arteries of the heart. But notice that within two and a half years of following a plant-based whole foods diet, that the blood flow was completely restored to the coronary artery, removing the soft plaque and the hard plaque reduced down, covered by kind of a special ceiling there. And the individual who is a medical doctor confirmed at Cleveland Clinic, where they do a lot of bypass surgeries, that because this particular doctor friend of Dr. Kelwell Esselstein could not undergo surgery for various reasons he was at risk, they decided to put him on a plant-based diet and he agreed. He stuck to it very carefully and it took about four hours of a lecture by Dr. Caldwell Esselstein. And instead of doing a surgery, which takes four or five hours, Dr. Esselstein, counsels people about avoiding oils and fats and, and animal products and eating all plant-based completely. And it's pretty exciting because Dr. Caldwell Esselstein is a former Olympic athlete in a rowing event. And there's a great interview with he and I on our YouTube channel that I can share with you. But I want to tell you that we have conclusive proof now, uh, several case studies that we can reverse coronary artery disease. Uh, Dr. Joel Furman wrote the book, The End of Heart Disease, a very important uh, book to read as well. Uh, Dr. Dean Ornish wrote the book, uh, Reversing Heart Disease. And again, documenting these studies that have been shown in the medical literature that we can conclusively reverse cardiovascular disease as we know it. It's, it's very, very important that every one of you pays attention because if you decide that you want to use a, a traditional method, we're going to talk about some of the traditional methods uh, such as using statin drugs, blood pressure medications, using intervention of heart uh, surgery, but the results have been rather dismal. In fact, the rate of heart disease has reduced hardly at all with the exception of those people following a plant-based oil-free diet. And there's four steps that you need to learn and we're gonna talk about these four steps as we progress. So please stay tuned and there's a special offer at the end of this show. Can biological medicine help us to live longer? By optimizing your testosterone, your hormone levels, reducing some of the harmful estrogen hormones. Bob Del Matique is a living example who's passed on since, but I worked with him in the early days when uh, he was following in his age 80, following a, an animal-based diet and he shifted over to a plant-based diet. I'm sure it helped to gain years to his life and quality of life to his, his, to his overall enjoyment of life. Um, also Kelly at age 77 shown here, uh, excuse me, age 74, you can see a picture of her in the lighter colored uh, bathing suit and with her daughter Colleen in the blue bathing suit. Bob Delmatique and Kelly are good examples of individuals 
who in the case of Kelly, she went to a plant-based whole foods diet and she also worked on optimizing her hormone levels. And so we're uh, excited to share with you, step number one is detoxification. And to detoxify, you want to include exercise in your plan. It stimulates lymphatics, it clears toxins while you breathe heavily, as you sprint, as you lift weights, little or no rest between exercises. Uh, weightlifting and jogging and running and um, HIIT training and core training. All these increase muscle strength, cardio, flexibility, and core strength. I'm excited because I've competed in these competitions and it's helped me to stay in fantastic shape even though uh, January 5th I turned age 65. Here's one of my favorite doctors, Dr. Jeffrey Life, who at the age of 54 had a pot belly, he had man boobs developing, he was overweight, he felt miserable. But by the age of 64, he had changed his life by following a workout program and, and, and using uh, hormonal intervention uh, as his approach to reverse aging. Yet he discovered he developed uh, under a stressful condition, chest pain, and he went and had it evaluated and he had blockages of arteries to his heart. So he decided to switch to a plant-based whole foods diet. Here's a picture of him shown at age 77. He turns age 81 on a Christmas, December 25th, 2019. So in a, less than a month here, he will be an 81 year old full of life and energy and he's writing books about his experience. And I want you to know that this is the role models I want you to follow. More exciting, can we have a healthy heart and clean arteries past the age of 114 years of age? Well, Bernardo Lapello wrote the book, uh, Living Beyond 100. It's a great book and he talks about, and there's some YouTube videos of him as well. Actually, I think I should do a, a YouTube reply so you can see his incredible videos where he's preparing salads and vegetables. And I, I, I wanted you to see here uh, one second, <laughs> here's here's the salad I brought with me today. Um, I've got I got some berries here in this bag here, but this is a typical salad that I'll eat throughout the day. It's got some uh, crock pot beans. It's got mushrooms. It's got uh, sugar snap peas. It's got uh, cabbage and kale, purple cabbage. It's got celery. Uh, it's got a fat-free salad dressing. It, it is so tasty and good. This is how I eat on a daily basis. Not just the vegetables, but I eat Asian food and Italian food and Mexican food. But I, I, follow, I follow these recipes in the Simply Healthy Cookbook. You can get them all and uh, we're going to include an ebook offer for you uh, near the end of this show. So... <clears throat> Please uh, pay attention because Bernardo Lapello, he eats salmon only. Uh, he ate salmon only a couple times a week. Uh, most all of his food was plant based. Um, he would rub olive oil on his skin rather than uh, going out of his way to consume a lot of oil. He would wake at sunrise and go for a nice long walk, two to four mile walk. He would go to sleep at sunset. He boiled his water because his father was a physician, was worried about microbes and water. I guess they sometimes lived in uh, Brazil and third world countries, but uh, Bernardo lived in Arizona. So it's interesting that he did live to, I believe, verified 106, but there are records that suggest he actually lived to 115 years of age. So as you see, one of my favorites too is Jack LaLanne. Jack LaLanne, age 95, uh, was even exercising up to one week before his passing. I went to the celebration of his life. Arnold Schwarzenegger was there. Some very famous people came to give their uh, final words. And, you know, Jack LaLanne, he once stated, I don't eat anything that's put in a can or a box. It's all fresh, whole food. He even uh, had a uh, special infomercial that aired with him using a Vitamix and blending up whole foods and consuming them. Uh, he, he was really a great example. Here's a man who also, in the early inklings, understood about a balancing of hormones. And I, I have to say that living a life of great vitality and just understanding the importance of quality of life. But so many of our people in the country are being put on these statin drugs. Are statin drugs safe? And what is the mechanism that they work on? And why don't doctors simply look at what are the possibility of an alternative to statin drugs? Well, here's an example of a former NASA scientist astronaut 
Dwayne Graveland. Dwayne had lost his memory being prescribed Lipitor. And he had muscle pain, he had liver damage, he had diabetes, he had weight gain. And about eight months or so, most people are shown to stop taking statins because of the side effects. They don't feel better on these particular drugs. And it's interesting that uh, Dwayne Gravelin, Dr. Gravelin, decided to go off, his family took him off the Lipitor because he had completely lost his memory. He couldn't even recognize his own wife. And he went off this drug and his memory came back. He then was put back on the drug and his memory went away. Now, it sure is there's isolated examples, but this happens so often in more than one individual that he even wrote to the medical journal saying that this is a serious risk or problem. What if there's a better way to reduce our risk factors associated with high cholesterol that we know cause plaques in the arteries instead of using statin drugs. Well, I already published the results and put them forth in my book. Uh, we're, we're, we're coming out with my new ebook on Grow Young and Slim. And in that book, I've published the results and I'll update these results for you in individuals who were able to do it with these four simple steps that we're going to teach you. Now, you say, but Nick, why don't I just take the blood pressure medications? Then I don't have to just change my diet. Uh, won't that work? <sighs> Keep in mind, according to Dr. John McDougall, that these blood pressure medications have some very serious side effects. Long-term use of diuretics or water pills cause electrolyte imbalance and the risk of death. Calcium channel blockers uh, have been known to increase the risk of breast cancer. Beta blockers have been shown, such as low presser or cold guard, to cause impotency and lethargy and reduce the quality of life. ACE inhibitors have been shown, like such as Vasotec and Altase, life-threatening swelling. And the worst of all, alpha blockers. Methyl dopa uh, and other drugs in that category are the most dangerous, causing a 15% 15, uh, 15 increase in death compared to those not taking uh, that particular drug. So the risk of falling, uh, according to Internal Medicine 2014, while on blood pressure medications has caused serious injury as well. So even if blood pressure medications reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke, uh, it's true that in those on a Western diet, blood pressure medications might help some people, but it's far less effective uh, than just encouraging people to go on a plant-based uh, whole food diet. In fact, it was shown that just three portions of whole grains, beans, and fruit reduces blood pressure as well as medications without side effects. So keep in mind that blood doesn't lie. And there's a moment here near the end, I'm going to put a little drop of blood on the screen and I, I can check my blood after eating what's called postprandial instead of waiting till after fasting. And that will show you how healthy a person's blood looks. Rouleau means stack of coins where the blood, blood cells, red blood cells stick together and they kind of stack up like a stack of coins. And Nathan Pritikin coined a term lipotoxemia, a disease in which excess fat poisoning affects the circulation. Dr. Roy Swank, who wrote a famous book about MS and a high fat diet and how we could go on a low fat diet to reverse the symptoms of MS in many people. But he showed that high triglycerides from free fatty acids, even virgin olive oil and corn oil and other type of saturated fats such as also coconut oil, all of these were at great risk to cause clumping and thick viscous blood under the microscope. But you can see down below, there's a picture with the red blood cells all separated. That's an example of clear blood where the fat-free approach has helped to keep these cells clearly circulating. It takes about 12 hours to clear fat from the blood after fasting. So that's why most doctors make you fast for a blood test. But fasting is unnecessary if you follow a whole food, low fat, raw enzyme rich diet, fruits, vegetables, potatoes, and so forth. You should titrate your calories, eat up to where you're 80% satisfied and keep your meals between eight in the morning and 8 p.m. That would be ideal. Uh, also, there's certain supplements that we're encouraging you to try, heart insulin stabilizer, where uh, we include this product to stabilize blood sugars because it has bergamotte, lycopene, and uh, 
the uh, use of these herbs helps to stabilize and lower cholesterol along with the uh, incredible product called Muscle Burn Fat. It's a beet-based product and it helps to dilate the blood vessels nicely. So exercise increases heart rate. Uh, that's important. Stay cool during your exercise. Don't overheat. So exercise in cool conditions, not in a hot gym. Uh, cool the gym down if it's overheated or find an outdoors uh, activity you can do. Uh, the use of the Beamer has been shown to improve circulation according to studies, and I'm encouraged by this overall approach. So when you look at virgin olive oil, which has four tiers of corn per tablespoon, it, it, it's just so concentrated. Look at butter, which has um, about 100% fat, just like lard, margarine, mayonnaise, and cooking oils, all 100% fat. Coconut is up at about 70, 88% uh, fat as our nuts and seeds in the mid 80%. But nuts and seeds and coconut have fiber in them and they're safer to eat. It's when you eat the fatty foods that are processed and butters processed, lard, mayonnaise, and uh, margarine. They're all processed and cooking oils are all processed. Furthermore, if it's animal-based such as butter or lard or mayonnaise, it has between 100 and in the case of butter, 250 milligrams of cholesterol per three ounces. So whenever you see this elevated level of cholesterol and fat in a food, it is double trouble because it's gonna, the cholesterol is gonna clog your arteries and thicken the blood vessels and make them less elastic. And that's gonna force the 120 over 80, the bottom number, the 80, uh, which should be actually 70, but to go up to 90 and 100 and higher. The top number, the 120, that can go up to 180, 200 and higher, like my blood pressure used to run. And that's from too much thick blood, from too much fat, and, and sometimes too much salt. So keep in mind then, there are effective ways to lower blood pressure. One way is to expand the blood vessels with the release of what's called nitric oxide. As you breathe, start learning to breathe while you jog or run or walk through your nose. Don't be a mouth breather. Breathe through your nose. Even if it's a little difficult at first when you're exercising, you're going to create more nitric oxide through nose breathing. Also, greens and beets and vegetables are very rich in plant nitrates, and that turns into nitric oxide when you chew it up. We have the product called Grow Muscle Burn Fat. You take a scoop or two each day, and that will increase your nitric oxide levels very nicely. Uh, I mix it into a smoothie drink each day, and uh, I put the uh, beet product uh, into the smoothie drink and drink this every day. It's so important to keep your blood vessels flowing effectively. So platelet aggregation comes from cell fragments and platelets are part of the clotting mechanism and they look under a microscope like smudging haze and they become clotted from fats and sugars. And some doctors will uh, prescribe drugs to uh, reduce platelet aggregation. It'll thin the blood. They're called blood thinners. But blood thinners and aspirin are not the best way to go. In fact, the medical journal Lancet stated that by eating more black mushrooms, ginger, scallions, and uh, these various uh, onions and garlic, that that would thin the blood as well, particularly if you go on a low-fat, high-fiber diet, it would improve the enzyme ratios, and you're going to see the thinning of the platelets and improved circulation without needing aspirin or blood thinners. We have a product called Stem Cell Enhancer, and that is loaded with medicinal mushrooms and other very important active ingredients, and this will help to improve not only the production of stem cells, but improve the circulation throughout the body. Insulin heart stability also stabilizes blood sugar levels. So those two products along with Beat Vitality are part of an offer I'm gonna give you at the end of this show. I want you to stay tuned. You'll be impressed with what's all included with that offer. The New Guinea sweet potatoes have the lowest fat intake, the lowest protein diet of anywhere in the world. They have the highest complex carbohydrates of any group because they eat mostly sweet potatoes in their leaves. They have zero heart disease and they're very muscular, strong people. It's interesting that the only finding of a study of over 700 people of heart disease was the cook from the American expedition. So rice fruit diet, does it reverse diabetes, kidney disease, hypertension, heart disease? Yes, it does. According to Dr. Kempner, who published his results in 1949 in the archives of internal medicine, that it was shown that the average person who had uh, diabetes 
and had kidney disorders, they were put on just simply rice and fruit in the hospital. For one year, they ate rice and fruit, and the average person lost over 146 pounds in one year. Not only did it stabilize their blood sugar, their insulin, it improved their kidney function, and they were able to reverse cardiovascular disease based on improved blood pressure. And had they measured their coronary calcium scores, they would have saw further results. And Danny, you're able to check YouTube and see yeah. activity there. So Bob Whelan, uh, is there a way to check nickdelgado.com too? Okay, so Bob, Bob Whelan is interesting. Here's a man who worked with me and uh, when he first came to work with me, I met him in San Gabriel Community Hospital. Here's a man who had served our country, a war hero. He had lost his legs uh, due to a bomb exploding while he was running to try and save a fallen comrade uh, in the war of Vietnam. And uh, when he lost his legs, he came back to America. He was scheduled to play baseball for the Philadelphia Phillies. He had a contract awaiting him. But without any legs, of course, he couldn't play baseball. He went on to become a motivational speaker. He followed working with me on Nathan Pritikin, the Pritikin Better Health Program, a whole plant-based whole foods diet. You can see he got in great shape. He's wearing a shirt saying Delgado Optimal Medical. That was the follow-up program to the Nathan Pritikin program that I developed in Newport Beach. Uh, this is Amber DeLuca, a fabulous uh, bodybuilder fitness star who uses many of the supplements like Power and Speed and Lean and Fit that we've created. We have UFC stars like Rampage Jackson that I've trained with. Uh, we have Diego Sanchez and others, uh, including a number of UFC fighters that are now going to more plant-based whole food eating. Uh, here's uh, me setting the world record in the curls, 50-pound curl nonstop lifting for one hour there at uh, Corona Del Mar. And uh, it's interesting that I also competed in Las Vegas with Dragon Radovich. And you can see my before after pictures in evolution to our muscular fit body. And this has served me well. I uh, want to say that uh, the excitement uh, that I share with you is one that is genuine and sincere. Bob Delmatique uh, turned vegan at the age of 80. 283, 84, and look at how muscular he was at that time. It's interesting, though, because of his years of eating an animal-based product and probably from holding a cell phone to his head, he had developed a brain tumor, unfortunately, and they ended up doing uh, chemotherapy. Uh, some of his colleagues said it would have been best not to do the chemotherapy, but it's a tragedy because he's, he's a great example of an individual. Look at age 17, 67, and 80, how he improved with age because of fitness and bioidentical hormones. Had he known about a plant-based diet or taken it seriously because most bodybuilders stick on an animal-based diet out of fear of losing muscle density. I'm one of them. I was terrified to give up my animal protein. I wanted to maintain my physique. And little did I know I could build muscle while being on a plant-based whole foods diet. I'd like to tap in now, Dr. Kathleen Geringer, to talk about this next segment because menopausal women and hypertension and the management of hormones plays a huge role in improving cardiovascular disease. And so let's, uh, let's please bring her up on uh, the uh, Skype. Do I minimize the screen? Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Just call the person. Okay. And does it just acknowledge people's information? Do I have comments? YouTube? Hey, thanks, Dennis Ford. Good to hear you. William Wint Wintum. You're here following the, the, the talk. Uh, please stay with us because we're going to take a short break and transition to another segment here. Hey, Dr. Geringer, are you with us? Do you hear us? Do I need to accept anything, Danny? Okay, I don't hear her. Okay, give us a moment. Sure. Okay, now I can hear you. No problem. Okay, perfect. Oh, okay, so uh, hopefully, can you see the slides? Uh, one in seven postmenopausal women die from heart disease. And yet, for menopa uh, postmenopausal women, uh, the number rises to one in three. So they have, uh, I made a I, highest complex. Let me correct myself. I said premenopausal. I should have said premenopausal one in seven are at risk for heart disease, but postmenopausal women are at greater risk. So what is your comment about this and, and this statistic? Well, when we're talking about premenopausal with premenopausal are, it's also known as perimenopausal. 
So what that actually means is that the, the hormones are starting to shift and we're talking about testosterone. Testosterone is what helps to maintain the muscle mass and the cardiovascular system, the heart is a muscle. So one in seven premenopausal people, especially women, have heart disease and it just jumps all the way up to like one in about three. Because once one they hit menopause, that's when the hormone starts to go down. So when the hormones go down, these women are at greater risk. Yes. And that's the same for men as well. Just like the next slide, we notice that testosterone, testosterone starts to decline as we age. At the age of 20, that's when our testosterone level is nice and high. That's when we're motivated, we're productive, and we feel like we can conquer the world. However, by the time when we're 50 years old, that testosterone level starts to dip down. And testosterone is not just for sex drive. More and more research and data showing that testosterone therapy, bioidentical testosterone therapy, actually really helps the cardiovascular system. It is cardiovascular protective. So all that research that was um place with the testosterone causing cardiovascular problem is totally outdated. They're talking about synthetic testosterone. They're not talking about bioidentical testosterone. And what we notice in our clinic is that we walk the patient through a whole protocol of what we call bioidentical testosterone pellet therapy. So we're just tracking the patient's pre-laboratory work and then post-laboratory work within about two months without really changing anything. It is so impressive to see by optimizing the hormones, their cholesterol level starts to go down and even their triglycerides. So we, we put all these little data together so we can actually use it in long term for research to show and it should be coming out because it takes about 10 years to accumulate all these data to make sure that we're able to track it down and see how these patients are responding to testosterone therapy. So for example, 50 year, uh, 57 year old female, height 5'4", weight about 154, menopausal since 2015. And of course, the classic symptoms are night sweat, hot flashes, brain fog. They can't remember anything. They, they, they forget their keys. They forget what's on their shopping list. They forgot that they, you know, are boiling water. Low libido, which is usually husband starts to bring them in or kind of like tell them, hey, have your testosterone level checked because there's no sex drive there. And so what we do is that we go through all this whole preliminary procedure and um, we use bioidentical hormonal replacement therapy. She was pelleted with a testosterone level of 125 milligrams and about 10 milligrams of estradiol. And estradiol is a good form of estrogen and we'll get into that detail um, in another segment. So her prelapse, her total cholesterol is like 225. And again, without changing anything drastically, because they're coming in here with brain fog, it's so hard for us to communicate with them when their brain clarity is not there. Two months later, after their pellet therapy, their cholesterol actually drops to 197. What did we do? We just optimized their hormones. Because once one our hormones gets optimized, we feel more productive, we have our drive back, we, we're, we're more motivated to go out there and do what we need to do. Next, next case history, 51 year old male, height about 6'0", weight 263, symptoms lack of energy, fatigue, lack of focus, weight gain, irritability, low libido, joint pain, muscle aches, so we administer bioidentical testosterone therapy and with pellet therapy, he was pelleted with testosterone of 1800 milligrams, pre-lab total cholesterol 212, two months post-lab without really doing anything in there, 185. I mean, that's so impressive. LDL 124, 
drop down to 109. And of course, his total testosterone level went from 576, it went up to 1423. His triglycerides was at a 59, it went up to like a 124. One thing that this one particular patient did was that because he's out there in the media, he's like reading all sorts of stuff and that ketogenic diet, which we'll talk a little bit more in the next episode, is that um, he felt like he had to consume all these animal based protein so he can actually maintain his muscle mass. So when he comes back, that's when we sit him down and educate him on not just feeling well, but again, those lifestyle changes that would really, really help him in the long term. And this slide is really important because a lot of times when we talk about heart disease, we talk about hypertension, which is high blood pressure. Everybody thinks hypertension is a disease. I just wanted to say, no, it's not. Hypertension is not a disease. See, when when we deal with standard of care, when you go to your doctor and you're dealing with blood pressure, usually what does the provider do? I'll give you something to lower your blood pressure. Here's a pill to lower your blood pressure, which makes perfect sense. Have high blood pressure, I wanna lower it. However, with functional medicine providers or holistic medicine or integrative medicine or whatever you name it, they have a different mindset. Their mindset is, I'll give you the tools to correct the abnormality in your vascular biology. What in heavens does that mean? That means let's go and find the root cause of the high blood pressure. Why is your blood pressure high? Maybe the function or the structure of the arterial system must be restored. Again, when we're dealing with high blood pressure, instead of saying, here's a medication to lower your blood pressure, which is, it does lower the blood pressure. However, what is the long-term effect? Let's make sure we go and support what the broken link is. Let's make sure we support the function of the arterial walls. Let's make sure we support the structure of your arterial walls. Uh, Danny, can you switch to the microscope uh, image? I I wanted to show a drop of my blood and you can actually see under the microscope uh, the float of the blood cells as they touch each other they just slide right off each other. And that's how blood should look like. When, when the blood's just flowing along, it should just flow nice and, and evenly. Uh, when we take a look at the white blood cells, you can see here in the corner, there's one white blood cell there, right there. That is a healthy white blood cell. And on the slide, there's just a little cellular debris. There's some broken cells, a, a little slight amount of platelets. But overall, it it looks really good because, you know, remember, I just stuck my finger and I extracted the blood out. But you see how those two cells there in the corner there, right next above the white cell, are starting to stick to something on the slide. Then they just spring away and then they separate from each other. That is how the blood flows through the capillaries. It just flows through (laughs) properly. And if you were to measure my lipids and cholesterol, which I've done hundreds of times for different uh, studies and research and just to show audiences... Uh, I don't have the Colostec here with me right now, but w- what I've been able to do is prove that your blood can be perfect in the middle of the day. It's it's 4 p.m. Pacific time, and I've been eating through the day, but I've been munching on whole fresh food throughout the day, healthy in a healthy style. I, uh, for people who are just joining, you can you can see this this bowl, huge bowl of vegetables, and it's got kale and Swiss chard, and uh, it's got uh, the uh, sugar snap peas. Uh, have you had those sh- sugar snap peas before? I've got some uh, uh, mushrooms and uh, a multi bean from Charlie's Chili that's made without oil and spices, and it tastes so good. I- I've got uh, some some green uh, cabbage and some um, some purple cabbage. So all the colors of the rainbow are in this salad with a fat-free 
uh, Walden Farm oil-free salad dressing. All these things I've just told you, if you want to lose weight, get in shape and look great. If I want to gain a little weight, I'll have to eat more beans and yams and eat them a little bit more often to keep my calorie intake up. But without eating animal product, I've been able to sustain muscle density and good blood pressure. Now, through the day, I've been using uh, a product called uh, Stay Young, and I've been chewing on those tablets. But I also want to mention that um, these tablets are perfect little tablets. You just, you just chew on them, and they're rich in nitric oxide. And they taste good. And I drink the beet juice. Danny, I can't hear her. So... Ready for the next slide? Hold on one second. So okay. I'll turn to the next slide. And um, as I do so, let me just mention, because we're talking about nitric oxide, so it's perfect timing, right? Mm -hmm. So talk about it. And I'm going to measure my nitro nitric oxide with this little saliva strip. I'm going to put some saliva on the tip and put the two ends together and see how it measures. Go ahead. All right. So let's talk about hypertension. So hypertension is a marker for arterial artery. It's a disease in the arterial artery. So if the bioavailability of the nitric oxide is slow, it causes what we call vasoconstriction, which causes the, the blood vessels to tighten up. And when that artery tightens up, it decreases the blood flow to the area like your heart like your peripheral nerves, like your extremities. And blood pressure medication changes the systolic or the diastolic number, which is the top number or the bottom number, and it lowers it. However, they're not talking about restoring the structure or the function of the arterial system. Just like what Dr. Nick is testing himself, he's testing his nitric oxide. It's called oxidative stress. So if we're not getting the right kind of foods inside our body, into our body, that inflammatory marker starts to go up. Yeah, so when you measure nitric oxide, you want it like a dark pink uh, approaching towards red. Uh, it's important because if it's white or depleted, now granted, I wouldn't normally take a drink of beet juice and eat a stay young right before doing the test. It would just be throughout the day. But the reality is I've tested this strip, you know, throughout the day at various times. So the more greens and beets and, and beet, uh, which is we call grow muscle burn fat and the stay young product, you're going to get a really good reading, which what we're explaining to you is this is one of the keys to protecting the artery walls, to keeping blood pressure in a safe range and preventing or reversing coronary heart disease. So this is one of the key steps with supplementation that we can see dramatic results. Uh, Dr. Geringer, can you expand on this, please? Yes, well, I, just like you, I'm drinking my beet vitality too, my, my grow muscle and, um, and what it is is that it helps to increase our nitric oxide. And if you hang out with me in my clinic throughout the day, my energy is sustainable throughout the day. So it's so important for our sympathetic, which is our fight or flight response, and our parasympathetic nervous system to be able to know when to turn on and when to turn off. And that's so important because if you have a hypersympathetic nervous system, voila, there goes the blood pressure, there goes the stress, there goes the anxiety. You cannot shut down and your body needs to shut down in order for you to sleep. And sleep is huge when we are dealing with um, blood pressure problems. Now, Dr. Geringer, while you talk about the slide, I'm going to pull up a slide showing oxidative stress so people understand what it looks like on a dry smear of blood. But please explain mm -hmm. what's, going, uh, what's going on with the arterial system. Well, both the structure and the function of the arterial system must be restored, again, to prevent further organ damage. For example, everybody understands diabetes. 
you know, what's the end stage of diabetes? End stage of diabetes is what we call kidney failure. So from a functional medicine point of view, if we know that that kidney is gonna fail at the end stage of diabetes, why not support that kidney? Just like with blood pressure problems. Yes, that blood has to push a lot of pressure to get through those narrow arterial walls. Those endothelial cells get damaged by everything that we do to our body, the foods that we put in, the environment that happens, or even your genetic biomarkers. I mean, you have to look at the whole entire picture. And in order for us to reverse heart disease naturally, you have to really understand the biomarkers and what are the steps that you can do on an everyday process to really protect your arterial walls from being damaged. Now on this slide, if Danny, we can go to the slide, uh, you can see what's called oxidative stress. These white holes in the dry blood uh, taken from a client that uh, attended our facility is, is showing the evidence of free radical damage or oxidative stress. So our goal is to repair this through infusion of not only nitric oxide from supplementation and, and selecting the right green leafy vegetables and beets and so forth, but also breathing through the nose. Very important as you exercise and go throughout the day instead of being a mouth breather. And I want to say that altitude conditioning, which is called CVAC, cyclic variation and adaptive conditioning. And also from an energy medicine perspective, we want to take a look at uh, what's called the Beamer. Uh, and the Beamer will show uh, the nitric oxide uh, benefits. And then lastly, uh, nitric oxide itself and oxidative stress can be reduced or amulated through a whole plant-based diet and detoxification. So all of those steps are necessary. There's four effective steps and then biological intervention with uh, stem cells and testosterone enhancement. Each of these things are gonna make a big difference for individuals who want to avoid oxidative stress or free radical damage. The goal is, I'll show you what, what healthy blood looks like, but, but Dr. Geringer, are they susceptible to autoimmune diseases, oxidative stress and inflammation if they're following a typical Western approach and they're not meditating, they're not getting restful thoughts and sleep and they're not doing the steps that we teach? Uh, tell us, expand a little bit more while I show them an example of healthier blood. But sure. So by going to your doctor, your primary doctor, your cardiologist, or whoever you go to, having your blood pressure checked once a year does not give you the green light that, oh, I have high blood pressure and I'm placed on these blood pressure meds and I'm okay. I mean, I have some patients coming in and they're filling their patient consult form and it asked, uh, and we asked them what kind of meds are they on or if they have blood pressure problems or high blood pressure. And they answer no. It's 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 just just blows my mind that they think that their blood pressure is now normalized that they don't have high blood pressure. <laughs> it's like yeah, the, you have they're high covering blood up the underlying cause. But if you saw that slide earlier about the disease risk factors, it's kind of like those commercials that come on television and they list this long range of diseases and conditions and premature death and people just accept it and they buy the medication anyway it's just amazing but you look under a, a dry sample blood you see how it all holds together this is a good example of a, 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 a sample of blood with low oxidative stress but i'm going to show something with a level of stress though in this picture here let me just convert over a moment uh, it shows up If you see these little holes, white holes in the blood, oftentimes that's an example of adrenal release and adrenaline and stress. And the smaller holes are example, the white holes are example of allergies, what's called delayed food allergies and gut issues. And I know you and I have to pay attention to these issues, helping people to overcome stress and gut dysbiosis and improve the adrenal glands. So that's where the hormones and the overall fiber in the diet and so forth plays a role. So I wanted to take us to, to the next slide here one second. Uh, okay, take a look. So I think this kind of summarizes some of the things we're talking about, Dr. Geringer. 
Yes. So when we deal with the hypertension or heart disease and especially high blood pressure, so the questions that we want to ask is what is coming into the arterial system? What's causing the arterial walls to be damaged? What's causing the blood pressure problem? What is the root cause of a disease? Number one, inflammation. Inflammation is toxic to the body. Inflammation is the root cause of almost like every single disease there is, even cancer. Oxidative stress, just like how Dr. Nick is checking his nitric oxide. When we have oxidative stress, it accelerates our aging process. So what happens is that when your cardiovascular system gets exposed to this oxidative stress, what it does is that it puts a lot of stress onto your arterial walls, thus increases the blood pressure autoimmune dysfunction. A lot of times when we have our diagnosed with high blood pressure, what happens is that it seeps into all sorts of organ system. And we don't want to just look at, oh, the heart, let's go ahead and put a bandaid for your boo-boo. Let's look at the whole entire system. If you look at the diagram, look at your cardiovascular system, look at the vascular system, look at the arterial system. It doesn't stop right at your heart. It goes out to your extremity as well. And that's why people retain fluid. And guess what? You get to have a pill to get rid of that fluid. I mean, makes no sense. Why can't we be proactive and strengthen our arterial wall to prevent this high blood pressure from putting a lot of stress on our endothelial cells. So when you boil down to chemistry and the whole biology of our vascular system, see the arterial system can only respond to pattern recognition. What does that mean? They only respond to receptors, you know, I mean, that's your arterial system. Is it a friend or is it a foe? If it's a friend, you open your door and you welcome them in. If it's a foe, what happens? The arterial wall senses that inflammation or the oxidative stress or that autoimmune dysfunction, it will go ballistic. So the sympathetic nervous system gets turned on and you're on that fight or flight response. And when that happens, your blood pressure starts to increase. Well, Dr. Geringer, I know there are certain herbs that can help to balance insulin and blood sugar and lipids. There are certain herbs that help to stabilize uh, the, the issues related to hormonal imbalance. And when we use these proper herbs and we, we go about the proper approach, uh, it's important to look at a product called insulin uh, shield or insulin stability, heart insulin shield. And it, it basically, with these various herbs of bergamante, lycopene, and berberine, uh, it, it's interesting, but people are going around using metformin, a, a diabetic drug to try and prolong life. And yet those drugs could cause side effects. I'm not convinced that that's the way to go. When according to Dr. Jonathan Wright, he agrees that instead of using metformin to use berberine, which we use in this product, it makes it rather advanced to use this product because not only does it purport, and in our experience, we've seen it lower LDL cholesterol, like in a client of mine, Ty Cannon, who became one of our coaching assistants, but he, he was able to lower his LDL cholesterol, which otherwise would not come down, even with a plant-based diet. There was something going on with his liver, some probably enzyme defect that somehow the bourbon bergamante lycopene and 20 other herbs in that product solved that problem nicely. So herbal medicine is commonly used in Asia and throughout the world, in India and so forth, but it's frowned on in the U.S. because people somehow are convinced they want to use a synthetic drug to solve a problem that really might be solved better by a natural intervention. So uh, Dr. Geringer, um, I know you're working with some of the uh, evidence that we have on lifeperformance.store and Doc Nutrients. With this uh, array of products, how do we tailor products for people? 
and when do they need products? One of the people calling in, Ali, is saying she has a cr uh, cracks in her pubic branch. I'm not sure if it was from an accident. She has pain. Uh, is it possible that CBD, which is hemp, we got to call it hemp, but we have CBD in uh, a oral syringe that you can just squirt in the mouth. We have a spray of CBD. Uh, are there natural anti-inflammatories within the use of turmeric, which is live detox? Are there certain products that could be used instead of these harsh medications to control pain? And will hypnosis help? Because we have a whole section on hypnosis that you can download at lifeperformance.store and listen to these scripts that are calming and relaxing at the subconscious level. Have you heard of using acupuncture or hypnosis or herbs to calm down pain and get to the cause of the problem instead of just covering it up with some harsh drug? Oh, of course. I'm an acupuncturist myself. <laughs> and actually, acupuncture is great for anxiety or even for blood pressure. I mean, we see people that have sleep problems or very anxious. They just kind of like fall asleep on our table and melt right on our table. And going back to to that one particular person messaging in, asking about her um her her pain what we do is that we classify the pain as acute subacute or chronic if it's something that just happened of course what you want to do is you you have a an array of things that will really go in there and target the the inflammation the current inflammation you know which is a lot of times magnesium or if there's muscle cramping coming with it um we have to make sure there's the blood of magnesium or, or potassium or calcium and things like that. And then if we're dealing with subacute that's been lingering on for about like three to six months, then there's another set of things that we look at. Or is it chronic? It's it something that's an inflammatory response that's chronically there. So what we want to do is that, of course, we talk about stem cell release because all our body actually have these wonderful stem cells that's able to go in there and repair and regenerate and rebuild new tissues. However, we're aging. So our stem cell bank decreases as we age. So with that, you know, again, we have to classify it and say, is it a current injury? Is it a, you know, or is it a chronic injury? And let's see what we can do to target the um, inflammatory process. And going back to our heart disease and our hypertension, our most common medication that a lot of patients come in with is lisinopril or a Tylenol. And taking those medications, we know it's going to deplete your body's natural nutrients. That's why medication causes side effects because the side effect is due to the depletion of your body's natural nutrients. So if we know that's gonna be the problem, why can't we educate our patients how to add those nutrients back into their body so that depletion won't cause all the other side effects that of course, you know, the um, on any kind of drug commercial, there's that little, little, little 10 second thing that they have to cover all the side effects. So lisinopril and a Tylenol, you know that's going to dec decrease your CoQ10. You know it's going to decrease your vitamin B6. And vitamin B6 is so important because it helps to convert your tryptophan into serotonin. And serotonin is needed to calm down and lessens the anxiety and actually helps with your sympathetic nervous system. And actually B6 helps to regulate the melatonin. I mean, come on, if you're taking a medication that you know it's going to deplete certain kind of nutrients, wouldn't it be logical to support that? <laughs> I mean, that makes perfect sense for you and I, right, Dr. Dick? And for us to go in and, 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 and talk about it and have a conversation about it, it's so important. It depletes our zinc. Um, it depletes your vitamin B1. And vitamin B1 is needed for glucose metabolism. That's your energy, you know? So if you're depleting your natural nutrients, what's gonna happen? The body breaks down. Well, of course, vitamin B1 gets depleted from white flour, white sugar, alcohol. It is, <laughs> uh, it, it, it really, it's important to understand that you, you wanna be proactive and being proactive is important for your heart health 
and we have a special pack here available. We're going to take a short uh, announcement here and then go back to our sec segment two. But the Life Performance Store is offering these very special products here, combination. And you can get them just by going to the Life Performance Store. And you can see within that Life Performance Store, there's an array of four products offer and they're discounted by nearly 50%. That's right, 50%. And if they go to Life Performance Store, they'll see the blue label. There's mixed in with MD Chemistry and other products, Activate Energy, uh, along with uh, one of the Delgado Protocol products. It's a new website that we uh, really feel good about. And the products include the uh, utilization of muscle burn fat. Uh, it also has the heart uh, insulin stability and it has Stay Young chewable tablets, and it also has the uh, special stem cell release product all uh, together as a very special package. So if you'd like to get this product, I think it'll really help you toward your goal of improving your circulation, your arteries. We already proved to you the science about how uh, not nitrous, because that's laughing gas, nitric oxide. <laughs> nitric oxide helps to stimulate the vasodilation of the capillaries, the blood vessels, and that helps to shield or protect the artery walls and heal at a much more rapid rate. We know that use of olive oil and, and uh, separated processed oils all deplete the nitric oxide level. So it's very important that people understand that these supplements play a role, but you also have to clean up your other habits. And we're going to get into the second section about the four steps of rejuvenating the body. And I want you to all stay tuned because if by taking advantage of this offer, go to the website right now during this offer, lifeperformance.store. We're extending the holiday bonus there. And also, if you take a look at that package deal, uh, of the four products, uh, I think you're going to be pretty impressed. You just scroll down, you'll see the one that says on sale, heart health pack. It's uh, only 123. It's an amazing uh, combination of products that will transform your health over the next 30 days. And it's available during this seminar with these ingredients and uh, doctors approved. It really is GMP quality. It's amongst the top you can get in terms of health and lifestyle rejuvenation. That's our webinar bonus for those of you who have stayed tuned. And also with that order, we promise to send you an ebook of the newest cookbook, the same advanced book that Tony Robbins used, but the updated version, Simply Healthy Cookbook, with all these incredible vegan, oil-free, tasty recipes for the coming holiday. We're in the midst of the holidays. We just finished Thanksgiving, now Christmas is coming up. Let's celebrate together a healthy holiday instead of continuing to celebrate. It would be like, hey, why don't we serve a little arsenic? Why don't we serve a little mercury? Why don't we just kind of add some chemicals in the food and just try and kill off the family gradually because we don't worry about their eyesight or their hearing or their heart or, or their organ or their liver. Uh, what do we serve our kids in the school lunch programs? We are insane because we're letting big pharma and big food industry promote and market and lie to you about what is safe and healthy. Sure, it may have what's called the grass, generally recognized as safe, label on it, but that that doesn't pass for the sake that you are eating junk food. <laughs> and so a lot of the fast food restaurants are trying to switch over to plant-based. They're making an effort, but it's it's not enough. We, we've got to look at, at the big picture. And with this bonus, I'm going to include the online course that we just completed, an amazing online course, Becoming Immune to Cancer. With your purchase of this package, you're going to get not only the Simply Healthy Cookbook, absolutely free, included with this 50% discount offer, but you're going to get the special course we just completed, uh, essentially becoming immune to cancer and it's life-saving. Between cancer and heart disease, Dr. Geringer, wouldn't you say those are the two biggest killers in, in, in the country, arguably potentially now in the world? And we're going to kind of transition as you comment on that to part two and just take a short uh, moment to transition over. Uh, I think uh, Barbara has a comment. When I first became plant-based, I noticed a reduced problem with post-nasal drainage. Now it's back and worse. Why? If I were you, Barbara, I would look at, uh, if we can turn to the microscope, Danny. If you look under the microscope, we look for what are called uh, these white blood cells, eosinophils. 
uh, they look like they're a little bit broken apart. If we see these white blood cells starting to break apart, that's a sign that you have what's called a delayed food allergy, particularly the cell at the top. So we then do a roadmap and we look at 130 different foods and there's a test kit when you go to lifeperformance.store, it's called the ALA test, food inflammatory test. And we send that kit out to you and when you collect the blood, like I stuck my finger, but you collect the blood and you put drops on the pad and you ship it off to Boston. And within about two and a half weeks, we get the results back and we share that with you so that you can then identify within the list of foods. Sometimes plant-based foods are great uh, in most cases, but some people, when you expand the foods that you're eating, there could be some proteins in some of the fruit or the vegetables or gluten or bread or whatever it is that you might be reacting to. So let's check that out because that might help the pulse nasal uh, drip. Also, you need massive amounts of fluids. I don't drink a lot of water. I eat, I consume large amounts of cold pressed juices. I eat large amounts of fruits and vegetables. So I'm never dehydrated. I don't eat animal products. So I don't dehydrate my body. I'm not sure, you know, within your diet, how clean it is, how much fluids you're getting in. Here's one rule. Check the urine, make sure it's running clear. If it's running yellow, you're still dehydrated and you're not quite getting enough fluids from the foods that you're eating. If you eat foods that are very dehydrating as you used to on an animal-based diet, but now you're on a plant-based diet, I still encourage you to take in more fluids and get them mostly from green juices, cold pressed juices. Juice your greens, eat your fruit, eat uh, the beans in a pressure cooker. Don't add oils to your plant-based diet because that can mess up your endothelial lining and affect your nitric oxide and your overall post-nasal drainage. So the drainage issue, I think, could be a delayed food allergy. It's about a little over a $300 test to have it done, but it's well worth it. I do it on all my clients whenever I see these uh, kind of nasal symptoms. Dr. Gerringer, do you want to add to that while I switch to the section, second segment? Um Yes, yes, and and what you say is absolutely um, correct. And what we want to do is that we also want to look at the food sensitivity or intolerance. Sometimes what we do is food elimination or food rotation. What do I mean? For example, for myself, I use turmeric. And turmeric is great for anti-inflammatory, but I put turmeric in everything that I do. So what happens is that sometimes my my results come back showing that I'm sensitive to turmeric. That doesn't mean turmeric is terrible for me. It's usually the things that we do every single day. We eat the same food every single day that's causing that sensitivity. So sometimes you have to reevaluate. That's why nature gives us winter, spring, summer, and fall. So go through the seasonal food and vegetables and eat what's in season. So that really helps you to rotate your food intake. Does that make sense? Makes all the sense in the world. Now for part two, I want you to be aware that by staying tuned, we're gonna give you another special offer that if you stay to the end and you just drop us a note in nickdelgado.com, go to nickdelgado.com. You might be currently watching us in YouTube, but we can engage with you more at nickdelgado.com. It's okay if you're on Facebook or YouTube, uh, but uh, when you get a chance, check out nickdelgado.com and you just simply register by putting your email and dropping in your phone number and we drop you back a link uh, to the show and you can watch. But all the recent shows have gone uh, placed up there, including the newest show, Becoming Immune to Cancer, which is a special online course for those of you participating with us on this webinar. You're gonna, excuse me, get this show absolutely free. And furthermore, <laughs> excuse me, I want to mention that you have an opportunity to get a, a product purchase of the supplements at 50% off as part of the bonus. You're going to also get an ebook of Simply Healthy Cookbook. And uh, stay tuned to the end of this segment, and we'll include one additional offer that I think you're going to be pretty impressed with. So I have a firm belief, uh, Dr. Geringer, that in my 40 years of experience of looking and helping and guiding people, there were two groups of people. There were the ones that emotionally believed it was important to change their diet and exercise and maybe not depend on drugs or surgery as an intervention and kind of follow a healthy, natural approach, right? They, 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 they basically believed it based on the facts and the science, 
but they can never quite get themselves to comply. Why couldn't they follow the program? I had educators. I remember the guys distinctly, Dennis and other educators, and they would teach this program showing slides and information, and they would really present well. They were great lecturers. But personally, they did not follow a healthy diet. I know how many doctors you see, you go to these conventions, and you see how they live and what they eat. And every year, Dr. Gerencher, don't they get a little fatter? I mean, I'm trying not to be... Uh, abusive or uh, critical of them, but they're out of control because they don't understand the working of their subconscious mind. And, and I'm going to make that statement very boldly. If the doctors were standing next to me at my same age and you look at them compared to me, again, I'm not bragging and arrogant. I'm just saying you see the difference, how rapidly they're aging, how overweight they become, how they have insulin resistance. They have heart disease, high blood pressure. They die prematurely, even though they're doctors and they know this information. Here's what I believe. To reverse heart disease, the unconscious mind, some people call it the subconscious mind, they're interchangeable, controls 97% or more of all of your behaviors. Only 3% is where you make the decisions about your lifestyle, the foods you eat, the exercise you do, whether or not you take supplements of the right type, whether you optimize your hormones and biological medicine, including possibly, say, products that release stem cells, right? But unfortunately, most people are programmed. They run programs that are defeating, that are self-sabotaging. Now, others may fail that aren't watching this show, yet you are going to win. And how will you do it? Tony Robbins once learned from Jim Rohn that success is based on repetition and memory or actions of behavior that repetition is the mother of all success, meaning you must repeat certain things on a regular basis to really integrate them into your subconscious behaviors. But even better than that, Danny, if they go to life performance.store. There's a section called hypnosis scripts. During this special for only $3, if you just scroll down where it says, uh, uh, see scripts, go, go to under products, go to products and watch the drop down. It'll say, just click on that, please. Okay. Go to coaching. <laughs> Maybe it's under hypnosis where I don't hear. Give me a moment. I saw, I saw it earlier today. Okay. No, it, it's back under, um, products. I saw it in the corner. Go back to products. So it, you'll see hypnosis scripts. There it is. See, scroll over to the far right, that drop down bar. Uh, one of them in the last pages, there's uh, page three, I think, is the hypnosis scripts. Emotion, maybe it's under emotion. You have something called emotion. I don't know why it's called emotion. Okay. So I, I stand corrected. Maybe it's under Delgado protocol um, here. We're, we're, yeah, just not mental clarity. Go up to where it says emotion. Maybe that's it. No. All right. Sorry about that, Danny here. Uh, open up for a moment. I guess it's under DelgadoProtocol.com. There's a section on hypnosis. They haven't added it to lifestyle performance yet, but they will. Oh, there it is. Drop down to hypnosis downloads. Perfect. Okay. You see that link? We're going to send the link to everyone who's watching this show, and we'll include it in um, the program uh, notes uh, for those of you who go to lifeperformance.store. But thank you. It's in the notes. And you can actually download about 10 different scripts about sleep, about consistent healthy eating, about taking your supplements, about how to manage your emotions and really integrate this program. What would you say, including along with BrainTap, Dr. Geringer, the subconscious mind, should be the main focus for them to accomplish uh, an 80% success rate or higher just by doing it for about a week or two of using these scripts. Uh, you see at the top, uh, can you see what that says there? This is uh, Nurka, by the way, who wrote the book um, as Supreme Influence, and she wrote about me in her book. But I've been using these practices of hypnosis, timeline therapy. I know you love meditation. Can you comment a little bit about the importance of how do we integrate people to be consistent? Because it's consistent behavior. You 
wouldn't brush your teeth once a month and kiss a girl. You you wouldn't work out at the gym once in a month and expect muscles. You you wouldn't take a bath once in a, a, a year and think that you're going to remain clean. You've got to clean your mind. You've got to think these thoughts. And we put together the programs that help you to meditate, to process through thought and prayer, whatever mode it takes. But you've got to break these destructive habits. These destructive habits right now tonight starts with your meal tonight. Whether you drink coffee in the morning or not, where you learn to eloquently increase your energy without needing coffee, whether you learn how to time yourself so you can sleep better and you can have more energy, you can look better and feel better. If this is important to you, then I'm going to purport this is the number one reason for failure or number one reason for success. If you want to join us in success, download those programs. I guarantee they're so effective. I'll refund your money if after listening to them for one month, going through the different programs, they're only $3 a script. It says LFC scripts. You download them to your phone. And then if you want to graduate to what's called Brain Tap, you can do that as well because I endorse those programs as well. Dr. Geringer, how important is meditation? LFC scripts downloaded their phone, the practice of hypnosis, and brain tap. How important is this to whether these people succeed in the happiness of their relationships, their health, and their career? How important is it? I think when we talk about our four-step protocol, it should be the number one. Your mindset is the number one. And of course, people don't just come into my practice and say, hey, Dr. Garinger, can you fix my mind? They usually go to the psychiatrist <laughs> to do that. But setting really really wake up in the morning with that mindset if you're able to tune out the world and really focus on the power of now just now and just really really concentrate on the mindset and put a lot of feelings to it it really calms the body down it really helps you deal with your anxiety it helps to deal with the stress why the science behind it is because it calms your sympathetic nervous system down. And the sympathetic nervous system, just like we mentioned before, is the fight or flight response. Right now in this world, we have Wi-Fi. We got like 4G. Now it's 5G. When it's going to 6G, it's going to come out. Everybody, oh my gosh, my internet is running too slow. I need to have faster speed. Everything is on this instant coffee, instant tea, go, go, go. How do you think your neurotransmitter or your cardiovascular system can keep up with it? You have to learn how to quiet the mind. Dr. Nick and I are on a go, go, go. But when I hit my bed, I shut down and I'm out. A lot of people, they're tired, but they're wired. And if you fall in that category, please download the, the program and really work with it for just 21 day consistently and build a habit. It takes about 21 days to really Break our habit or add a habit. <laughs> so add good habits. I usually say add in before you take out. Yeah, Dr. Bandler in his book, Transformation, talks about it really takes a moment of decision to transform your habits, but truly to break them and see them in place. As you mentioned, 21 days to 30 days or so, most uh, behavioral therapists will agree with that statement. But furthermore, the importance of sleep, Dr. Geringer, sleep uh, plays such a major role in the quality of health and life. And I think people who are difficult, having difficulty getting to sleep are basically not producing the proper hormones. It's interfering with their hormone production and even the length and the quality of their life. So uh, that's why I'm such a big advocate about uh, encouraging people to learn uh, the what we call timeline therapy and use these LFC scripts, uh, laser focused concentration scripts that you listen to. There's also a book called Eyes Open Hypnosis that I really endorse. And I, I think that as people follow this type of approach, they're going to see a huge difference in the quality of their life and health. But it really transitions us to now the main subject of what we're talking about, and that is the immortal peptides for strong health. Dr. Geringer, I know we've been studying and working with and researching, and I myself have been using several uh, peptides, and it's encouraging to see 
the science is starting to support that we can have a balance of hormones and peptides while supporting lifestyle, healthy approaches, diet and exercise and quality sleep. But we also need to appreciate the importance of these peptides. Human growth hormone is a peptide. And the other peptides is anything that has 28 different active amino acids, which are strung together and really have a stimulating effect on quality of health and well-being. I know that Arnold Schwarzenegger, who uh, recently underwent uh, uh, coronary heart procedures and was concerned about his heart health. He's gone to plant-based whole food nutrition and for most of his life he's utilized hormones to sustain a youthful approach. Now we have what's called bioidentical hormones. We don't have to use the synthetic hormones that people like Arnold and bodybuilders were using in the early days and some of them still use them to this day. But we know that human growth hormone and testosterone and herbs that stabilize insulin stability are going to balance the hormones and improve heart function. Dr. Geringer, I know you work with a number of athletes and they can't be on synthetic drugs. So there's natural ways to restore uh, the bioactive form of health and well-being, isn't there? The benefit of sleep and the special product, burn fat and um, grow muscle, that product helps to stabilize along with the product of um, we call insulin stability stabilizer. That product will help quite a bit with the overall hormonal balance, as is stay young, right? Yes. Um, with that burnt fat and, and a grow muscle, I just absolutely love it because it helps to increase our nitric oxide, which helps to basal dilate our blood vessels and allow to, again, lower our blood pressure. But not only that, it's high in antioxidants. And I use that to... Um, to it, it, in my water. I drink it every single day. I have it right here, right next to me. And I mix it with my water because it's just something, it's nutrients that I'm putting back in my body. I can eat all the beets that I want, but it's not going to give me that blend of stuff, like rich nutrition that I need for my body to, again, decrease my inflammatory markers decrease the oxidative stress and decrease the autoimmune response that I'm exposed to on a daily basis. Especially, uh, I'm a huge golfer. I love to golf. And of course, the golf course is a beautifully manicured and I'm gonna attend the father and son tournament, which I go every single year. And they're walking on these beautiful manicured golf courses, but guess what? the environmental toxins, the glyphosate the, that, that's placed, the fertilizer that they're walking on every single day. Don't you think that's gonna cause an inflammatory response to your body? I'm like, come on, <laughs> you know, we can't live in a bubble. So do what you can do to really protect your body. Get that, that army inside your body, protect your body from the outside environment, from invading within. So go back to the root cause, support the arterial system. This is an amazing tasting powder. It tastes wonderful. It's got a base in beets and amino acids and niacin to vasodilate and detoxify. It's got the ingredients that help to support overall healthy uh, growth factors, and it will support healthy dreams, improve uh, quality of sleep, as we've pointed out, as one of the keys to longevity and better health, uh, improve stamina, uh, better increased immune system, the activity of the overall muscle tone, feeling stronger, looking better, uh, reducing some of the PMS symptoms. And also, it's certainly one of the ways to recover quickly after exercise and fatigue. So uh, I would encourage people to look at this special at Life Performance Store and also combine that with some of the herbs in the product insulin stability along with adrenal support. And we've got the liver cirrhosis concern that people have. Even people are not drinking. They're developing fatty livers from eating these keto diets, these high fat diets, the Western diet. And they really need to really become alert that using this product, uh, insulin stability, insulin shield is gonna help, especially if they have a history of alcohol and they're drinking more than one glass a week. They're having food addictions, flu, fatigue, uh, nasal sniffle, sniffles, lipids, 
uh, elevated. All these things can be helped. I would encourage, because the, the, the caller or the note uh, chat person earlier about the nasal drip, I would look at that whole issue about the adrenal function. And we have a very special adrenal product that has dimethylglycine with it that helps detoxify uh, the, the overall hormonal issues. So Barbara, when she asked about the nasal drainage, it can play a big, big role as well. And of course, we face an ever-growing problem of obesity and man boobs and body fat in men, estrogen dominance, and it continues to develop. And we're going to talk about that further in our hormonal segments coming up on uh, our online courses. And the heavyweight boxer uh, champion of the world, Mike Tyson, had called us up about how to balance his excess estrogen levels. And he switched over to using one of our DIM products, the DIM Professional. And it really made a difference. It, one of the early versions, it was called Block at that time. And also a plant-based whole foods diet, also very important. So if you're concerned about the quality of your skin, you want to reduce the incidence of acne, obesity, and heart problems, really look at this um, insulin uh, stability heart product that will help quite a bit. Uh, Frank Mir and Randy Couture both recently uh, had some challenges, particularly Randy with, with a, a heart problem. And having met up with him and knowing that they're trying to follow these alkaline diets. I know Frank Mir tried a plant-based diet for a while, but you need to have more support. And that's what this program is. We're going to support you emotionally, mentally with the neuro reprogramming, physically, and answer your questions. So it's great to have those of you who are tuning in. And I want to mention that most Americans follow a one or two meals a day. All these fasting people are advocating. But a sumo diet is eat one meal a day. And then when they do eat, they eat so much more calories. The body holds in that body fat. And that's how they get to be so massively obese. So car uh, cardiologist Kim Williams and 14 other doctors are now supporting plant-based whole food eating. They're supporting oil-free plant-based, which is really critical. A lot of people have gone plant-based, Dr. Geringer, but they haven't made that next step to get the processed oils out of their diet. Somehow they think oils are healthy, almost like someone from uh, the mafia in Italy is convince them that drink oil and use it in your salads and use it in your recipes. Why are they all using this olive oil and various oils that are so toxic to people? It's just a fat, just like the ketogenic diet or the Atkins diet, you know, it's just being relabeled. And um, because we kept seeing all these blood chemistry and we noticed that patients that are on long-term ketogenic diet, their liver enzymes are high and also they displace their kidneys and going back to blood pressure and heart disease. You know, sometimes hypertension is, is secondary to a kidney dysfunction. And going back to that slide that I showed earlier, the arterial system, the vascular system, it goes back down to the root cause of a problem. And when we talk about all these supplementation products, we're just educating you on how to rebuild what's broken. We're, we're teaching you these tools, how to take control of your health and really, really rebuild your body and protect your body. Why am I taking all this stuff? Why am I drinking my, my grow muscle um, uh, beat stuff? Well, not because I have hypertension, not because I have all these problems. It's because I'm trying to decelerate my aging process as much as possible. And my skin feels absolutely amazing, Dr. Nick. <laughs> you know? That's fantastic. And, and you know, we, one of our biggest part. sellers is those people wanting to improve the quality of their skin and prevent acne, for example. It's interesting that Walter Longo of USC uh, has published his findings that following a plant-based diet is going to be the best way to longevity. But he advocates fasting about five days a month. And during those five days, he wants you to drop to 800 calories, but it's all plant-based he's advocating. He sells a product line that's all plant-based with food bars and different things. And these people are able to lose weight by resetting their set point and following this. Now we use the Slim Blend Protein as part of a way during that fasting stage to get 20 organic whole fruits and vegetables and fiber and vitamins and minerals. But I have to say that around the world, when you look at cultures that go towards more of a low protein, and I shouldn't use the word low because it implies you're not getting enough protein. I should say adequate in protein, but far less animal product, but more plant-based and without belaboring it, the New Guinea natives of 
um, uh, are sweet potato eaters and they eat 3% fat, 3% protein, and over 90% complex carbohydrates. Very healthy group, free of diabetes. The vegetables are 20 to 40 calories per cup. And when you eat more vegetables, you're going to get a rich array, uh, array of vitamins and minerals and nutrients. Take a look, for example, at the fat content, the protein and carbohydrate. The first line, the dark line, is the carbohydrate amount. And that's fibrous, complex carbohydrates. The second line is the protein. And the third yellow is the fat content, which makes sense. And notice all of these vegetables contain no cholesterol. And without exception, each of these vegetables has a rich amount of starch, uh, uh, resistant, that is resistant starch, fibrous complex carbohydrates, over 60% to 80% of the calories. It has about 10 to 20% Protein, look at asparagus. It has, what is it, approaching 30, 40% protein. And squash has over 22% protein. Mushrooms have about 38% protein. So you get protein in all foods that you eat. And here's the good news. When you're getting a quality vegetable protein, you're getting also less fat. And fat is very thickening to the arteries. And we want to keep our fat intake reasonably low and get our fats from omega whole fibrous foods, nuts and seeds. We'll talk about that in a minute. So take a look at these categories, Dr. Geringer. Can you see the fat content, how low it is in black beans and cooked fruit, uh, that is cooked peas and fruit and lettuce and broccoli. But notice also it has protein and these foods contain a rich amount of fiber. Look at the fiber content of black beans. What is it? Over 19 grams of fiber per cup. I mean, you only need about 60 to 100 grams of fiber a day to to totally cleanse the body and rejuvenate the body in, in a lot of instances. Look at the potatoes, beets, yams, and sweet potatoes. Again, low in fat, uh, a good amount of fiber, four to six grams of fiber. The protein content is moderate and the calories are nice and low. So uh, of course, all fruit then is part of a good weight loss program, only 20 to 60 calories. Look at cherries, peaches, fruit, pear, pineapple, strawberry, watermelon, cantaloupe, all less than 10% fat, really low in fat, rich in water content and vitamins and minerals, and it all has some uh, protein in it. So fruit should be part of any diet you're trying to stabilize insulin and blood sugar because fruit has polyphenols and that helps the blood sugar levels. It's kind of how they're promoting wine to, you know, control heart disease. When the grapes are better for you than the wine, look at the category here of grapes. You see grapes about the fourth one over. It has uh, protein. It has a low amount of fat. It has uh, complex carbohydrates. You see bananas and apples are good for you. Now look at avocados and olives. Look at the fat content. Now you can eat avocados and olives in small quantities. Don't overdo them, but they do contain no cholesterol. If they have roots and grew, there's no cholesterol. So this is a great category of foods to eat. And if you're trying to gain a little weight, go ahead and have some more avocados and olives. But if you're trying to keep your weight down, eat more of the leaner foods in, in the diet. So here's a good uh, chart, uh, Dr. Geringer. Can you see the chart? Low density foods. And you can see the 20 to 40 calorie foods, vegetables and so forth, fruit, mushrooms, lettuce, pepper, squash. Then it jumps up to 20 to 40 calories for fruit and watermelon and so forth. And then it goes to 60 to 120 calories for tubers, mangoes, bananas, and persimmons and things. I love persimmons. I just got some at the whole food market there. And uh, 120 to 140 calories for brown rice, beans, yams, all very good for you. But look at how the calories jump for raisins, dates, and uh, for nuts and seeds and avocados and olives. I said you can include them in your diet, but don't overdo them. Uh, they get up to about 600 calories per 100 gram serving. So always remember you're going to get all the protein you need on the diet. Even if you don't add animal product, you're going to get 40 to 60 to 80 grams of protein. You only need 20 grams of protein a day because the body recycles all the enzymes in the intestines. But look at, here's the dangerous foods, meat, cheese, eggs, and dairy product. Look at flank steak, the white category now jumps on the screen because that shows where the foods have the most cholesterol. Uh, you can see that chicken and turkey, which often people think is healthy for you, is higher in cholesterol than sirloin steak or flank, uh, fl uh, flank steak. Do you see that? It's higher in cholesterol. Why do people think chicken and turkey is so good for you? It's in the flesh of the meat of the turkey and the chicken that clogs your arteries. Ham, duck, and goose are high in cholesterol. They all have fat contents of approaching 40 to 50%. And they have protein, but not as much protein as you would think. And it's not a quality type protein. Don't forget, meat then in summary, 
And poultry is not only high in cholesterol that clogs your arteries and leads to heart disease and high blood pressure, it's high in estrogen because they have uh, estrous cycles, these animals. Fish doesn't have estrous cycles, but we're going to talk about that in a minute. They have PCBs from the ocean, which are toxins, and leucine, which is an amino acid that tends to force a, a type of mTOR, which is a growth factor that people are trying to use metformin to control when you can do it through selection of the proper foods. So look at liver and its concentration in heart. You wouldn't have a healthy heart if you keep eating heart. Look at how much cholesterol it has. Liver has almost 600 milligrams of cholesterol. So I've heard of people uh, grinding liver for the liver juice, and that might be okay. I don't see a problem with that. But eating the whole liver any more than a, a slice of it, because three, 100 grams is three ounces. But look at how dangerous salami, bologna, frankfurters, hot dogs, and sausage, all very high in cholesterol and fat. But worse, these processed meats are loaded with chemicals that have been known to cause cancer. It's like smoking 10 cigarettes a day. And look at the cheese, eggs, and dairy product. You can see uh, that the category of um, egg yolks uh, breaks the chart graph there, and it goes up to over 1,500 milligrams per 100 grams. So that's just four eggs uh, contribute to that much cholesterol. The highest cholesterol besides monkey brains that some people actually eat, I guess, in some parts of the world. Cheese is extremely high in cholesterol. Cheese is twice as high in cholesterol as chicken or turkey or red meat. So I don't, I'm shocked at how often they promote pizza on the Super Bowl games and football games and everyone goes out and eats pizza. Right, Danny? They all eat pizza and they need to switch over to diet cheese, gluten-free, uh, really tasty. Everyone's addicted to pizza, but it doesn't mean it's good for you. You're you're going to have ED and you're going to have strokes and heart attacks and it's just all going to happen inevitably. But look at the high fat, high protein foods. These are the foods to minimize. In the top of the category, if you're going to eat them, fish, scallop, shrimp are re reasonably okay in low calories, but don't overdo them because they do have cholesterol. So, uh, salmon, chicken, turkey, um, egg whites, 200 to 350 calories, milk. And as it gets down the list, it gets worse. Rib, pork, it has uh, the use of hamburger, cheese, and chocolate. Nuts are okay, but they're high in calories, so don't overdo them. KFC chicken, Carl's, but you can get the Carl's Planet Burger. It's a little too much fat, but at least it's better for you than the animal-based hamburger. Pizza, you can choose some alternative uh, pizzas. And olive oil and margarine butter are the worst on the chart there. So the charts and graphs show you that per cup salmon has uh, about 412 calories, but look at a cup of olive oil, 1,910 calories, zero protein in olive oil, not good for you at all. Coconut oil is loaded with fat and uh, as sugar. Sugar is about half the calories of oils, and yet people know sugar is bad for you, but they somehow think oil is good for you in excess. So eat a variety of whole foods. Uh, the Slim Blend protein is really good with 20 organic fruits and vegetables. I like to do what's called bulk co cooking. I do one crock pot of some beans. I got a pressure cooker of some vegetables, particularly uh, beans cook in like 35 minutes in pressure cooker. I have some brown rice, like a Spanish brown rice and vegetables in a double boiler. So I get these things cooking for the whole family and I don't include meat as the center of my meal. If you do eat meat, eat it as a small portion of the meal. Dr. Geringer, isn't the Asian tradition to eat animal product in smaller quantities and vegetables and so forth in much higher quantities? Oh, of course. It's almost like if you have a circle and then you divide the circle into, you know, divide in half cut it across and then cut it a fourth. So it's a, a quarter of what I call protein, a quarter of carbs, complex carbs like squash and, and um, sweet potatoes or, or, you know, vegetables and stuff like that. And then the bottom half of the plate, half of the plate should be full of vegetables. And of course, in our culture, I use a lot of kelp. I use a lot of sea vegetables because it's a, it helps to, get rid of heavy metal toxins and it really helps for thyroid function. And we talk about that when we have our segment on hormonal health, which you and I are so passionate about too. We get our omegas. We don't have to add oils. We can get our omegas from soaked nuts and seeds, olives, avocados, coconut, it's a rich source because it has fiber and the fat that is absorbed is absorbed slowly and methodically the way the body was designed. So always include when you're getting your fats from essential uh, nuts, seeds, avocados, and olives. I take chia seeds, flaxseed, and uh, the... Uh, 
uh, hemp seeds and so forth, and I mix them all together. Sesame seed, they're also good. I just soak them in water, eat them with berries in the morning. That's, that's one of the best ways to consume it. And use fat correctly because if you're going to use the olives, that's a better choice. Don't use the olive oil. If you're going to eat the coconut, don't use the coconut oil. If you're going to pull coconut oil in your mouth and spit it out to cleanse your mouth, that's okay. If you're going to rub coconut oil or olive oil in your skin, that's okay. But get the nonstick pans, uh, titanium pans are advocated best because they, they do heat the food properly without uh, exchange of toxins. And do definitely, uh, with the offer of this uh, package of product at the end, you're going to get an ebook of the Simply Healthy Cookbook uh, with Asian recipes, Italian recipes, Mexican and Greek recipes. I know you've thumbed through the cookbook and used some of these recipes your, yourself, Dr. Geringer. Isn't part of uh, the light of being human is being a foodie, but you get to eat healthy. And it takes time for your taste buds to adapt, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I, I tell everybody, I know that in our little plant-based world or vegan world, um, your theory is, you know, you, you eat to live in my foodie world. My theory is I live to eat because I enjoy food, but I enjoy food in moderation. I believe in the 80, 20 rule, 80% wholesome raw foods, 20%. I can deviate every now and then, but if you're diagnosed with a problem or an illness, you don't have that chance. You have to do a total lifestyle change. That's and correct. that's what I try to explain. And mo to most cultures around the world, because meat and dairy and cheese and eggs isn't a big part of their culture, they eat it, but they don't eat it as the main portion of their diet. And because throughout their life, if they have eaten meat and you say, well, they eat meat too. Yes, they do. But it doesn't mean that they've eaten as much as, you, as well, the average American. Yes, we don't supersize our food. That's <laughs> right. the problem. Everything is supersized. Everything well, should I, be in small portion, not supersize. <laughs> yeah, I used to supersize things because I was addicted to the sugars and the oils and the fats and the flavors. And so I got up to over 205 pounds. I wanted to play football and gain weight, but I became obese at 25% body fat. And you know my story, I reduced down to 169 pounds. I stay between nine and 11% body fat. I've cleared up my hypertension. I have no longer a risk of TIA. My appetite's under control. My hormones are balanced. I'm getting sufficient protein. I didn't have to stick with high fat protein foods. And it's made the, all the difference in the world to the point where I've bro broken strength endurance records in my 50s and 60s. And I've been able to work with some elite athletes around the world. I'm also using more of energy medicine. I'm really intrigued about Beamer, pulse electromagnetic frequency. And this sends a flow to improve the 74,000 miles of circulation of blood vessels throughout your body, it improves cardiac function, improves fitness, less stress, and it helps to control autism and ADD. I've had some clients improve tremendously with this, and it helps with better sleep. Uh, I, I know you have some athletes that love to use the Beamer uh, for their daily uh, routines, right? Yes, yes, they do. They incorporate into, you know, our whole protocol, which again is our four-step program. You know, uh, we, we must detoxify, and that's what we teach our, our, our audience, de detoxify the body, make sure you nutrify the body, put the good nutrients back in, fortify the body, make sure you balance your hormones, do stem cells and things like that to protect your body from that external environment. And then the power of the mind. Of course, you and I know that the power of the mind should be the number one. And if you talk to these professional athletes, how do they get where they're at? Because it's their mindset. Their mindset is just amazing. But if we're able to teach them the tools to prolong their career, because once when a pro athlete gets injured, there goes his body. He knows that. So these, these professional athletes are very smart now. So we teach them, hey, that steroid shots that you've been getting all those years, it's going to catch up to you. And they know it. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that at least they're open mind to chiropractic care, acupuncture care, nutrition, things that they would do to really support their body. But we have to constantly educate them. Well, we, we all agree we need better sleep, a stronger immune system, 
Uh, some people enjoy the use of small amounts of melatonin at night. Make the room very dark at night. That'll help you sleep better. Make sure you're getting an improvement in nitric oxide, which we've talked about, which is the Stay Young mm -hmm. Chewable Tablets and the uh, Grow Muscle Burn Fat uh, has the beet base to it. Also, CBD is very helpful uh, for those with management of infl inflammatory issues. Uh, the product Stay Young is rich in astragalus, which helps to lengthen the telomeres and use the LFC scripts to really get your mind on track. But don't forget that special package of products, this offer that's 50% off for the event here tonight that includes the insulin shield stability, the grow, uh, grow muscle burn fat. It includes the Stay Young chewable tablets. And then there's a fourth product that includes that we're going to get to here in a minute. But all this helps to regulate blood pressure, improve circulation, improve improve the quality of health and, and well-being. Uh, of course, if you're wanting to release stem cells to improve the quality of your health, stem cells are very healing and the insulin product with all of its herbs help to heal the body as well. And we, we have the aspect, aspect of gut health and what does it do to improve the microbes? And of course, nitric oxide rich foods are so important to good quality health and good food preparation techniques. As part of our online courses and our coaching program, we give you the advice and the guidance and the help. So if you want to get started with us and really learn why the diet experts now are recommending whole-based nutrition of eating, uh, not just the Mediterranean diet, but going above and beyond. And all those studies show that the, the fad diets, the keto, the Atkins diet and so forth is not the way to go. But I would look more at how do you personalize your supplements? Go to lifeperformance.store forward slash form and get in touch with one of our coaches. We have special sessions as little as $45 for a 35 minute session. And you can learn some of the factors. You can find Dr. Nick Delgado on iTunes. You can look up uh, Nick Delgado com on some of the past shows that we've done. And I just want to summarize in Dr. Geringer, uh, since we're out of time now, and we're happy to be able to upload this to people. Detoxify then in summary, please quickly go over the, the, the steps that you mentioned earlier. Absolutely. So first, audience, make sure number one, write this down, please write it down. Detoxify, detoxify your body. Make sure you eat detoxifying foods like the beets and things like that, or even take a walk to stimulate the lymphatic system to detoxify all that toxins that your body is bombarded with, but sweat it out. Number two, nutrify the body. Please add in great nutrients. Your body really needs it. Add in the good foods, add in the raw foods, add in the supplementation that really support your body and allow the organ to heal. Number three, of course, what we wanna do is fortify the body, build a fort around it so all that external environment don't keep bombarding your body with it and also protect your arterial walls. We're talking about hypertension. I mean, you know, your blood pressure doesn't just spike up overnight. The, 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 the inflammatory process, that oxidative stress, that autoimmune dysfunction is what's causing the blood pressure problem. Not because you're lisinopril deficient, not because you're a Tylenol deficient, not because you're a blood pressure pill deficient. It's because there's a deficiency in your body, in your arterial system, your vascular system that's causing the hypertension, the heart disease. We want to go into the root cause. And of course, number four, the power of the mind. That is so important. Make sure you go in and download those scripts and really start practicing it. Practice it tonight before you go to bed. Practice it first thing in the morning. Quiet your mind down so you decrease that stress load. You decrease that chronic stress load, that anxiety that you're battling with on a regular basis. Did I cover it I've, all? <laughs> I've worked with people all over the world and, you know, having my experience with my father and my grandmother and working with John McDougall and, and Ray Wilson and, and being part of Team USA and really part of a growing movement of individuals that believe that lifestyle medicine is the way of the future. We can really accomplish so much more, help the healthcare. We can do these things, but it starts with a simple hormonal quiz. Go to lifeperformance.store. There's a quiz there to take uh, about your lifestyle Style, and it takes about 25 minutes to fill out. There's also an eligibility quiz. And we have a special going on here during the holidays to take part with 
our uh, coaches and you can get a 50% discount on the program. So the four steps are quite clear. We're going to share with you in the coming programs. And if you want to go this journey with us, you really want to make a difference in your life, then please take part in these webinar specials. Take advantage of the products that are available. Uh, let's uh, get you involved because there is a lot of confusing information out there. We're going to cut through all the clutter and the misinformation. We're going to share with you how to stabilize the body and we're going to show you the references, the journal references about why the body functions as it does, but more importantly, how we can all live a longer, better quality life. I'm uh, excited and thrilled to share this program with you because heart health is everything. We've covered uh, a lot of inf information. I want you to kind of re-review the material and share this with uh, your friends and relatives because your heart health, your blood pressure, your cholesterol levels, your triglycerides, but it starts with a hormonal quiz and a lifestyle quiz. Go to our website uh, that's listed Listed. You'll find the links through nickdelgado.com and you can then register for the next event because I've got a lot of people asking me about how do we accomplish fat loss. We had a, a course, very popular course called Fat Loss and Fitness that we're going to add to the program and our next webinar next Tuesday will be uh, on this subject and we're going to move up the time a little earlier so more people can participate. So everyone, thank you. Be strong, be well, and I really appreciate you hanging in. This is a three-part segment that will be uploaded later for an online course. So while it's still available, please uh, share nickdelgado.com and go to iTunes, Dr. Nick Delgado. And I think you're going to find some of the best programs in the segments and series because it's our commitment over the course of this year coming to the year 2020 to transform your life. Dr. Geringer, thanks for being a guest. It's been very important, your insight and information. And I think that people, we've just kind of covered the beginning of the whole story, but we're looking to have healthy, happy graduates and individuals that have mastered the main areas of health. Uh, wealth, which you have to have performance to accomplish wealth. Health, you've got to apply the principles that you, we've been teaching you. And happiness, the whole theory of love and happiness and contribution. Isn't that the most important thing in the whole world, these three factors, at least for most people in family and spirituality? Yes, and health is wealth. Without your health, what's good is your wealth, you know? And it's like, you want to be mobile. We all want to be mobile. And we want to decelerate that aging process. So download those, um, those programs and go ahead and start working on it. Work on your mindset and really, really take this journey with us. And Dr. Nick and I have been doing this for a long time. What, 40 years for you, Dr. Nick, and 20 years yes. for me. So yes. we're the product of the product. And we want to make sure that um, right now we're just giving you the knowledge, giving you the tools that you can apply on in an everyday basis to better yourself, better your mindset. And that's the only way for us to change healthcare in America or throughout the world. And I, I mentioned that if you stay tuned to the very end, I'm going to give you one extra special offer. For those of you who download any of the programs, the LFE, LFC scripts to help yourself with the power of the mind and complying with the program that we both said is absolutely essential to your success. For any of you who download that or you get the special 50% off discount at lifeperformance.store, the heart health pack, uh, that's available right now. Uh, if you click to lifeperformance.store or you enroll in one of our uh, preliminary coaching evaluation programs, lifeperformance.store forward slash form, we're going to give you a bottle of DNA protect with all the 5G and exposures that we're having. It's a methyl donor that's very advanced, also known as NeuroInsight. And we'll so send you whichever label is ready right now. We have a whole new production of the branding coming out uh, this year. We're so excited about the transformation and the additions that we're making. So uh, that's it. You're going to get a free bottle uh, included with your order of uh, either a download and we're going to include the Simply Healthy Cookbook. So you have multiple bonuses, almost too many for me to list. If you want, I'll list them in the show notes so you know what's available but you would have had to stay tuned to the very end as those of you who have so thanks everyone be well be strong take care and it's blessings to all of you healthy heart happy heart and be your very best contribute to the world now's your opportunity this can be the most important year of your life thank you